So here it is, the first in my series of comic book movie reviews. And while it may not technically be the first comic book movie ever made, it is the first one I'm gonna review and where I'm starting. And with that, I can really only think of one way to properly start this video. Man 66 or just Batman, but you know, there's a few of them So we got to clarify is brought to us by director Leslie H. Mortensen and stars Adam West, Burt Ward, Burgess Meredith, Cesar Romero, Lee Merriweather and Frank Gorshin. Now this movie is based on the iconic 1960s Batman TV show that ran from 1966 until 1968. Bit of trivia after being canceled It got picked up by another network and they wanted to continue on with it But all the sets have been destroyed and they deemed it too expensive to continue Anyway, the movie pulled out all the stops. It had all the main villains from the show. You've got the Joker, you've got the Penguin, Catwoman, the Riddler. You also had all the cast members from the show make appearances in the movie. Now let's be real, like many movies that spawned from TV shows, this is very much like an extended episode of the show. However, while the show was very self-aware, it is nowhere near as self-aware as this movie. Now the show that this movie's based on absolutely has nostalgia for me, leading up to the release of the 1989 Batman movie, they played this show on TV all the time. And while I knew that it was corny as hell then, I absolutely loved it. Though I was afraid that going back now and watching the movie, beyond the initial nostalgic blast I would get from it, I would find myself a bit bored. But surprise, surprise, I actually had a pretty good time with this movie. Sure, there is the whole nostalgia side of things and that kind of offbeat, quirky, kind of self-aware humor it's got going on. But it never really wore thin. This movie is actually funny as hell. I kept expecting to get bored with it, but I didn't. I loved it from beginning to end. Some of the truly out there jokes they have in this thing are true cinematic gold. Like Robin's ability to instantly figure out the answers to the Riddler's riddles, and the way that he makes these truly strange connections to mean something to move the plot forward are absolutely hilarious. And I don't mean it's hilarious like it's so corny and wholesome it's funny now. No, they absolutely knew what they were doing. You watch this thing and the performances and the looks on their faces and the very tongue-in-cheek way they perform everything, they were absolutely in on the jokes. Going back and watching this movie now as an adult gave me a new appreciation for the 1960s Batman show and this movie. I've kind of had this view in my head of what that show and that era was from when I was a kid. Just to clarify, I was not a kid when this show came out. It was repeats and reruns in the 80s. But I've kind of had that view in my head and now I kind of want to go back and explore the show some more to see if it was as self-aware and tongue-in-cheek as the movie was. Now this is obviously not the Batman of 2021. This isn't even the Batman of 2000. Hell, this isn't even the Batman of 1989. No, this is a free-willing and free-spirited 1960s wholesome, to a degree, Batman. This movie takes camp to a whole new level. Like, so much so that there is a scene where a shark latches itself onto Batman's leg as he is hanging off of a rope that's on a helicopter mid-air. He hollers up to Robin and says, bring me the shark repellent bat spray. And we watch the whole multi-minute sequence as he tries to pick out the shark repellent spray from all the other aquatic creature repellent sprays in the Batcopter, climb all the way down the rope, flip upside down, hand it to Batman so he can spray the shark, punch it in the face, it falls to the ground, and when it hits the water, it fucking explodes. This isn't some quick sight gag either. This whole sequence is over the course of minutes. But it never gets like boring or just too much. It's so ridiculous and over the top and out there, you're just staring in awe at how far they're gonna take this thing. When you think, okay, they're done, they're not gonna take it any further, they keep going with it. There's a charm and lovability that runs throughout this movie from beginning to end. And while I can't go as far as to say it's a good movie, I can say that it is a 
great movie. And our performances here are on par with everything else in the movie. Straight up, campy, tongue in cheek, in on the whole joke. Adam West as Batman was one of the most ingenious casting calls ever. If he had not tragically passed in 2017, I would formally request that he be included in the new Flash movie that's coming up. I mean, they're getting all the other Batman for that movie. It'd be criminal to exclude this one. Burt Ward as the Boy Wonder is the perfect compliment to Adam West Batman. But he's not just a psychic. He does get his chance to shine in this movie. The rogues gallery of popular villains that we get here is astounding. You have Burgess Meredith's Penguin that while admittedly I've always said I kind of hate the character of the Penguin, his portrayal of this character has inspired every Penguin that came after him. Frank Gorson's Riddler that absolutely inspired Jim Carrey's take some 30 years later. Lee Merriweather's perfect performance as Catwoman and the iconic Joker turn by Cesar Romero mustache and all. No one here is taking this serious but it seems like they are all having a fantastic time. And that bleeds through to us the audience. I kept expecting this movie to have lulls. I was expecting to get bored in parts and I just never did. The story honestly is so, no pun intended, batshit crazy that I couldn't possibly tell you what the hell it was. But that's not what this movie's about. It's not about the overarching story, it's about the moment to moment zaniness. And it has that in spades. This is pure unadulterated entertainment and I just wasn't expecting it to be as fun as it was from beginning to end. Guys, bad Batman 66 is the campy movie that all other campy movies aspire to be. It was the king of camp and still is till this day. It's an iconic ride that is corny, goofy, over the top, and campy. And it is also absolutely worth a buy. Do it. Do it. Show me the money. Do it. You motherfucker. Do it. So. Show me the money. Do it. Batman 66 wasn't only better than I was expecting it to be, it was better than I remember it being. You're not getting dark and brooding Batman, but if you are looking to just have some campy good fun, then check out Batman 66 one night and I think you'll have a great time with it. So there it is guys, my review of Batman 66. If you enjoyed and want more content like this, hit that subscribe button and help my little channel grow. If you want to help out the channel, check out my Patreon in the description below and become a jarhead and get some of the awesome benefits that go along with that like these guys. If you liked what I had to say, give me a like. If not, let me know in the comments below why. And as always, stay sexy, Gotham. That's just a sample of the exciting exploits ahead in our first feature motion picture. Holy memoranda, folks. Make a note not to miss it. Good thinking. Robin. So seeing as how it did become a bit of a tradition with my last series, I will this time with this series at the end of each video go through and say, so what's next on the comic book movie review list? Now the list is digital by the way. Ooh, we're getting risque with my first rated X review ever. You cheeky little cat. But will it be the last review of a rated X comic book movie? Hmm.